Each year, an estimated 35,000 Nepalis are sold into modern slavery. They're vulnerable in part because of their economic conditions. Of the 29 million people who live in Nepal, nearly half live in poverty. But the country is trying to fight back. Police recently busted a network that was trafficking people into neighboring India for the illegal sale of their kidneys. Producer Zeba Varsi traveled to Nepal, including a district known as the Kidney Valley, to examine the rampant human trafficking and meet the men forced to live a sort of half-life with just one of their two kidneys. Working as a tea boy was not part of the dream. But 19-year-old Santosh is not where he wanted to be, and he's not who he used to be. He's always reminded of what was stolen from him by his car. His body has to adapt to just one kidney. They must be punished for this. My body is damaged. I faint. I can't do hard labor. And I find it difficult to stand for too long. This is the cost of being poor in Nepal. Millions of workers leave their countryside villages because they have no choice. I have four sisters and a mother back home. I'm the only breadwinner and have six mouths to feed. I have a very small farm and we have been making no money. In June, men came to his village in central Nepal with the promises of a new job in India. They took him to New Delhi, the capital in northwestern India, and said he needed a blood test in Kolkata. There he was drugged and doctors removed one of his two kidneys. The traffickers gave him $4,500 and sent him packing back to Nepal. They asked me to say yes to whatever the doctor asked. I didn't understand Hindi, so I just said yes to anything he asked. And then he did this to me. Over the last two decades, dozens of men from villages in Nepal have either voluntarily sold their kidneys or were trafficked and duped into it. In Santosh's village, we meet Dan Bahadur Malla. He led the investigative team that found Santosh. They busted two trafficking rings and made the largest number of arrests of kidney traffickers in Nepal in a decade. COVID-19 has played a key role in increasing human and kidney trafficking. People have lost livelihoods and have no jobs, but they need money to survive. Traffickers see this as an opportunity to mislead people who are in economically hard situations. We drove to villages across this district in central Nepal known as Kidney Valley. In some, traffickers and victims live as neighbors and were angry at our presence. Driving off-road up the hill is the only way in. This tiny village in East Nepal is nestled on a beautiful hilltop, but it has a tragic reality. It is said that almost every man who lives here has just one kidney. As one mother told me, her son was born an equal, but life had other plans. My older son gave his kidney a few years back. He used to work as a construction worker. Now he struggles with life. He's weaker and gets sick easily. 69-year-old Kali trudges on with life, burdened by poverty. A few years ago, her oldest son sold his kidney in India for fewer than $500. I don't know how he's able to live with just one kidney. It gives me sleepless nights. He can only do light work. He can't lift heavy weights. I worry about him. The next victim is close. I walked next door to meet the Bardeva family. I know that my uncle's kidney was sold when I was young. Whenever he changed clothes, we could see the surgery mark, and Grandma said his kidney was sold. 13-year-old Shuddita aspires to rewrite her family's poor fate. A few years ago, her uncle sold his kidney for $300. And only last month, she stopped her father from selling his kidney. He needed money to start a new business. I cried and cried, and we all in the family urged him not to do so. He is both our mother and father, because we don't have a mother. And he finally agreed not to sell his kidney. Her favorite song by her favorite singer is about the unconditional love of a mother. She dedicates it to her father, the only parent she's known. Oh, 
they has not got enough humanitarian assistance as they need because uh, it is a kind of heinous crime. Murari Kharil is Nepal's National Human Rights Commissioner. He says the governments of India and Nepal and humanitarian agencies are one step behind the traffickers. They are trying to find out the uh, orphan children in the street and trying to bring them in their contract and, uh, and trafficking, basically in the hospital, big hospitals in India. In particular, one hospital. Nepal investigative officials told the news hour each new victim led them to the same hospital, Rabindranath Tagore International Institute for Cardiac Sciences in Kolkata. It's been in the headlines for illegal kidney transplants in the past, but has never been prosecuted by Indian authorities. When a single hospital is being repeatedly in the news, uh, clearly there seems to be a problem. Dr. Sanjay Nagra leads an association of global experts from more than 100 countries that creates international norms for transplant procedures. He accuses the medical field of looking the other way and the rich of exploiting the poor. There is a lot of money riding on it. Individuals who need kidneys, who some of them money, a lot of transplantation in South Asia, including India, is done in the private sector. And it is, uh, there's huge money involved. The news hours calls and emails to hospital authorities and health officials in India went unanswered. If a doctor is violating the law that prohibits the buying and selling of organs, the doctor should not be enabled to continue in that practice. Dr. Francis Delmonico is a transplant surgeon and the former president of United Network for Organ Sharing, which oversees transplantations in the United States. He says Indian health officials need to do more. Organ trafficking has been a repetitive experience in India, year after year after year. So for Indian colleagues, it's no surprise. For the international community, it's a major disappointment that the government of India has not come forward to prohibit such practice. Responsibility also lies with the home country. Santosh's village is home to Nepal's first budding attempts to stop the kidney trade. At one time, 150 victims were found in a village, but only three cases were reported. So Nepal's police anti-human trafficking unit tries to convince villagers to expose traffickers. Malla tells residents from 12 villages, we will not give in to organ trafficking. Human trafficking in Nepal is an organized crime, and the nexus of traffickers is well connected from here to other countries. This is modern slavery, and we all need to do more to stop this. And until that happens, Santosh and so many other Nepalese are at risk of being exploited. For the PBS NewsHour, I am Zeba Varsi in Nepal. And you can read much more on the issue of organ trafficking in Nepal online. That's at pbs.org newshour.